welcome to the world of anesthesia today i am going to discuss the anesthetic management in an obese patient obesity is a disease because it is the physiological dysfunction of human being due to the endocrinologic genetic and environmental causes obesity is divided into various groups depending upon the body mass index this obese patients are cause at the greater risk of developing many other diseases for example the diabetes mellitus obstructive sleep apnea the coronary artery disease left ventricular heart disease and the heart failure they are also more prone to the hypertension then they are more prone to the ischemic strokes then in the males it lead, it can lead to the impotence and infertility and in the females they lead to the primary sterility in the 6% of cases then these obese people suffer from the osteoarthritis that 10% more deaths are seen due to the cancer in these patients the obese patients are more prone to the liver and gallbladder diseases our pre anesthetic evaluation depends upon the evaluation of these systems and diseases our investigations also depend upon these associated comorbidities but the airway assessment is very important in the case of obese patients the airway can be assessed by the mouth opening mallam patti classification thyromental distance as you see in this case the patient is with a short neck which indicates the difficult intubation and any neck with the circumference greater than 40 cm in the case of female obese patients indicates that the patient may have obstructive sleep apnea and it can create the difficult airway there can be deposition of additional adipose tissues in the oropharyngeal airway tissues especially the tonsils the area epiglottic fold the lateral pharyngeal walls and tongue all this deposition of adipose tissue leads to the narrowing of the airway with the longer anterior posterior axis and short transverse axis which leads to the difficulties in maintenance of the ventilation by the mask and difficulty in the laryngoscopic view of the larynx and endotracheal intubation so we are to be very very careful about it proper positioning of the patient can ease the endotracheal intubation and laryngoscopic view now what happens is we have to place the towels under the upper part of the body to raise it and we have to elevate the head and extend the neck by placing the towels or the sand bags beneath the head beneath the shoulders the main aim of this position is to bring the ear in line with the sternum this is known as ramp position this helps in the better view of the larynx and eases the endotracheal intubation in the obese patients there is increase in the vital capacity functional residual capacity inspiratory capacity and expiratory reserve volume therefore there occurs desaturation very rapidly ethnic periods when we are doing induction of anesthesia secondly there goes on derecruiting of the gas exchange units during the course of anesthesia to maintain the proper saturation of oxygenation or the pay obese patients we are to take a few steps during pre oxygenation we do it with the help of the cpap so secondly we should do the induction with the patient inclined with its head and up by 25 degrees it is said that this position helps in the better oxygenation 
and it increases the duration of apneic period during the induction. After intubation, during maintenance of anesthesia, we can apply PEEP and we should use the mechanical ventilation. Desaturation and de-recruitment of the gas exchange units can be prevented by the sustained inflation of the lungs at the 50 centimeters of water pressure and after that applying the teeth with the mechanical ventilation. Invasive monitoring in these cases is not required unless and until they are associated with the comorbid diseases. So then and only then we do the invasive monitoring for example transesophageal echocardiography, CVP, pulmonary artery catheter and direct blood pressure monitoring is done only when the patient is associated with other diseases for example the heart disease, the coronary artery disease etc. As far as the, the drugs are concerned there is more uh, fat in the body and less water in the body of obese patients. Therefore, the distribution of uh, water soluble drugs and the fat soluble uh, drugs differ. The propofol, the opiates and benzodiazepines have exaggerated response in the case in the obese people. Propofol, vicuronium, rocuronium and remifentanil, the doses of these drugs are based on the ideal body weight. While in contrast to it, the doses of thiopentone, the benzodiazepines, the succinylcholine, atracurium, cis-atracurium, fentanyl, sumfentanyl depends upon the total body weight of the patient. As far as the selection of uh, inhalational anesthetic gases is concerned, it depends upon the physical properties of the agents, for example, the tissue partition coefficients that is the blood gas partition coefficient and fat blood partition coefficients. Sevoflurane and desflurane are the best anest inhalational anesthetic agents in the case of obese patients. As far as nitrous oxide gas is concerned though it has some analgesic effect but it is mainly avoided because more oxygen requirement in obese patients and secondly in the laparoscopic surgery it can lead to the dilatation of intestines which can interfere with the work of surgeon therefore this may be avoided extubation again should be carried out in the reverse Trendelenburg position the upper part of the body and head is raised by the 30 degrees in this case I am going to do the awake extubation now there is present the respiratory effort of the patient and now I will give the reversal in the form the neostigmine and glycopyrrolate. So my patient is on the spontaneous ventilation and I have taken out the tube. I will keep this patient in the post-op period on oxygenation for at least 12 hours and I will keep the head and up and in, the, in these such obese patients the sitting position is preferable. To conclude this with the proper technique the newer anesthetic agents which are short acting 
and proper positioning of the patient, taking proper care of the patient. All these factors have decreased the morbidity and mortality in the anesthetic management of these patients and made it much more safer. Secondly, an anesthesiologist should never hesitate to take the help of his another colleague for the management of such cases. And in the end, I dedicate this video of mine in the sweet memory of my dear Papa who took his last breath on 19th of April 2011. Oh dear Papa, you are always in my heart. I love you. I miss you. Miss you. Miss you. Thank you.